All right, in this video, we're gonna walk through how to track your sales, profit, and loss in Google Sheets. This template slash tutorial is perfect for e-commerce brands and people selling digital products online, and especially those who are using some sort of paid marketing strategy. This template will give you a lot of useful data uh, to plan your strategy based upon. So let's start out. At first, you're seeing the main dashboard, which is really where you're gonna get most of the insights from this template. Now this is populated from two different sheets. First you've got the product sheet, which basically has all of your product lines, really like an inventory sheet. Uh, and to fill this in, really all that you need to do is add your product name and your product's price. So let's say I'm adding a new product here and it's 60 bucks. That's really all that I gotta do. I, I also should probably add the date that this was created and I can just copy over everything else. Um, these are some other details we can fill in. For instance, are we running ads? Where is it ranked in SEO? And some sort of description about what, what the product uh, actually is like on, on a unit basis. And we can just copy over all the rest of these formulas and it's going to pull from this second sheet, which is the sales sheet. And this is what tracks all of your sales and, and obviously feeds into the profit and loss dashboards. You can either fill this in manually, it should only take about 10 minutes a week uh, if you're just filling in all of your sales, or if you use Zapier or Integromat now called Make or some other automation software, you can also plug in your sales data directly to Google Sheets uh, by using some of those no-code tools. But either way, this data will fe then feed into the rest of the spreadsheet and give you all these really nifty dashboards as well as some pivot tables and um, some annual dashboards and other views that will be helpful as you strategize uh, your overall approach. Let's get started looking at these dashboards. First of all, you have the quarterly dashboard. This has a simple monthly overview of your revenue and sales numbers, as well as a product specific breakdown. You can just adjust these to say I wanted to switch these two. It's all completely automated as you can see. Um, you also have the different places where your products are getting sold, which comes from the sales sheet right here on Source. So if you're selling on different marketplaces or destinations, this is super helpful. And finally, you have some weekly breakdowns of sales and a channel breakdown, which also comes from the sales table on the refer column, based on the refer column. So using all this data, you can really plan and optimize where you're spending your marketing efforts and what is generating the largest ROI. Now that's a quarterly dashboard. You're gonna have one for every quarter. This is all just populated with placeholder data. You also have an annual dashboard, which is a little bit more in depth. It shows, again, a monthly revenue and sales number, but also a little bit more detail in terms of what's the average sale price, how much of this is, how much are you spending on, on different ads platforms, and what does profit look like? You also have this goal setting section up here where you can set some of your goals for what you're trying to achieve, which will feed back into some other places inside this template. Once again, you have your breakdown by product type as well as source and uh, really nice charts right here in terms of the whole monthly overview of these same data. And uh, finally, a quarterly breakdown, which we'll pull from these other sheets that are quarterly dashboards. Now this is all super useful to get a high level overview of how your products are performing and what your PL looks like. But you also have these pivot tables, which are really nifty when you wanna get some more specific drill down. So this one shows you based on the license data that gets entered into the sales table right here in column K, how much is being, how much of sales are coming from each of these different uh, licenses. And similarly, you have this section all the way at the end of the sales sheet, which has all the timestamps in this weird sort of looking day table, which you can simply copy over when you're adding new, uh, new sales and sales data into the sheet. And basically these columns help fuel these two pivot tables, which are super useful when you're planning any sort of paid marketing. So you have the first table, which shows you the day of week where you're getting the most sales. And then the second one will show you the time of day during which you are generating the most sales. So this is based on the data again on that first table. So all of our timestamps in, in this case, in this example case are set in UTC. So you would wanna convert from UTC to your local time zone. But otherwise, this is really useful data, especially when you're tweaking your advertising and paid marketing campaigns. 
So that's a quick overview of what you can do with this PNL tracker template for Google Sheets. Now, a quick overview of how to actually use this and how you'll need to update it on a, a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Really, daily, you don't have to do much. I would suggest updating this sales sheet once every week, but if you've got a ton of volume, you might want to update it more often. When you do so, you just want to fill in all of this data. There are a few, few fields that you can copy, which are based on formulas, like this day column you can just copy, and uh, also this month column will automatically calculate from here. So if you wanted to add a new sale, for instance, um, I'm just gonna populate a placeholder. Let's say we sold to Jane Doe on Etsy and it's a product 24. We got paid 25 bucks, but the net that we earned was 24 bucks and it was sold on May 25th and it was a group license. Now you can really just drag over the rest of these formulas and they will automatically populate the only things that you want to fill in are these timestamps and it's up to you how much you want to fill in here in terms of your attribution but you have all these columns to put in the location ip refer all that just so you have it for your own records but really what matters for the dashboards is this one where you're going to specify where the sale came from so that's how you populate the sales table now moving on to the dashboards at the end of every quarter and at the end of every year, you're going to want to clone these dashboards. And you also have another view, which is this weekly view and these sum of ads views, which are a little bit more specific and, and drill down into your weekly performance. And similarly, you want to extend these out. So first I'll show you how to extend these weekly views out. We're now already in June, so I'm going to extend this out first in June. You just add some rows up top and then click and drag. And you're all set. There you go. You've got it. You've got what you need. We're just going to copy this here and set that to June 22nd. And now you can drag this up every every week or whatever, and it will populate. Now we don't have any sales data in here, any placeholder data for these dates, so it's currently zero, which is what we expect. Same thing here. You really only need to populate the spend and clicks fields, and the rest of this is completely automatically populated. So let's say we spent 200 bucks and it got 500 clicks. We just take this and drag it up and it will automatically populate. And same thing here, we're gonna just drag this all up and it automatically populates all of this data. And it's really helpful to just keep tabs on how are your ads performing? Are you actually generating profit from them? All this is tracked right here and you have these nifty totals up top so you know what's the lifetime performance of your advertising campaigns. So those are the weekly dashboards. Now, moving over to quarterly dashboards, you simply wanna clone the sheet. You just click duplicate like I did here. Now, in this case, we're gonna create the Q3 2022 dashboard for this example. I'm just gonna rename that Q3. There's instructions here, but it's all fairly simple. You just wanna replace the end dates and the start dates. So if the end date was 2022.07, we're gonna to wanna to make that 11. So we find and replace, make sure that it's only this sheet that's really important, and make sure to click also search within formulas. Now we replace the greater date first. Now that that's replaced, we can go back and replace the starting date. So that just took care of updating all these totals fields. Now you're going to want to come down here and just update these. You really only need to fill in one, and then you, when you paste, just choose paste transpose. So that will take care of that. Now you're all set on these, and the last little bit is these weekly breakdowns. So the easiest way to do this, to just copy the top one, paste special values. This whole thing's gonna update, but that includes that old value, so we're just gonna do that one more time. And now you're all set. You just grab, grab this, copy that down here, and you have a Q3 dashboard, completely fresh, ready to go once you start putting in that sales data. So this is how you generate a fresh quarterly dashboard. You do basically the same thing for the annual dashboard. If we were to do a 2023 dashboard, instead of substituting by the start and end date of the quarter, I would just do it by the start and end date of the year and then copy and paste all of these monthly uh, columns throughout the whole dashboard. And that's really all there is to it. You can, as you can see, this dashboard will give you a really powerful overview of how your business is performing, as well as a bunch of different drill downs 
interior ads, weekly performance, variation and time and day specific performance, and just overall long term how are things looking for your business. So this is a really useful PL tracker for anyone who's selling e-commerce or digital products online. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful.